viewers welcome back to session so in this lecture we will discuss about mode of submission of tender how to submit tender and then we will discuss about how to open that and how we can evaluate of tender so let us start with mode of submission of tender you have to consider one thing if you are a contractor and you want to submit tender how will you do it for example you are a contractor and you want to submit the tender and in that case there are generally four envelopes method we are using in our field so let us start with envelope number one in this envelope Shall contain the earnest money deposit EMD in the form indicated in the notice inviting tender. So, in the notice inviting tender, mention about the EMD value. So, the contractor has to fill particular with the treasury mode of payment which has been mentioned in the notice inviting tender. It may not allow to case, it may allow only the treasury of the bank receipt. So, the contractors has to submit EMD based on the tender inviting notice. What is EMD? Earnest money deposit is submitted by the contractor to giving assurance that he want to do that work and he is giving the assurance that uh, we can say he is giving the willingness to do that work if the client is offering that work he will do that work so to understand in the simple language EMT is giving the assurance and guarantee to do that work and it's generally one to two percentage of the total amount of the work and the, all the contractors are participate for that work and selected contractors EMD will convert it into the security deposit and others contractor will get back the EMD value after the bidding process. And what about the security deposit? If security deposit is collected from the contractor because the contractor has to fulfill the terms and condition which has been mentioned in the contract. If he will not follow or he will not maintain the quality of the work, so security deposit will not be refunded to the contractor. So this is the security deposit. So the, in the first envelope, the, it contains the earnest money deposit which has been mentioned in tender inviting notice with the particular mode so if the contractor fails to emd then tender will be rejected from that construction firm so there must be emd from the contractor side in the envelope number one now let us discuss about envelope number two in the envelope number two consists of the covering letter of the offer Second thing, the special features that are the contractor fields are worth mentioned about his offer. Contractors has to give the assurance that he will do that work very well with the terms and conditions, with the qualities and having the financial capacity, having the commercial capacity, having the resources like men and materials in this envelope there should be solvency certificate from the bank authorities the latest income tax certificates 
so the client or owner can judge the capacity of the regarded to the financial and the list of work of the similar nature and the magnitude carried out by the tender because the client or owner will judge that the contractor had done with the terms and conditions and he is maintaining the qualities so he is capable to do that work so in this envelope there should be list of the work similar nature and magnitude carry out by the tender and the details of the plants and the machinery available so having the facility regarded to the machinery so with the machinery he can do that work smoothly and within the time duration and as we know the each class of the contractor should have to follow the terms and conditions by the government in this envelope there should be also complete detail of the work in hand at the time of the submission of the tender now let us discuss about envelope number 3 so in this envelope contractor has to certain price tender form with the signature of tenderer and based on the quantity of the all the activity and rate of the work the contractor will calculate the particular price with that he want to do that work so in this envelope contractor has to submit the price tender form with the signature and in the envelope number 4 in the envelope number 4 this is in larger size compared to the envelope number 1 2 and 3 and in this envelope contains the envelope number 1 2 and 3 and there should be mention the tender name of project so i repeat again in the envelope number 1 there should be emd earnest money deposit in the envelope number 2 there should be detail about the financially machinery and other required document in that envelope and envelope number 3 there should be price tender form and these all three envelopes we have to fill in larger envelope which is envelope number 4 and this should be properly sealed and on the envelope number 4 there should be mention about the tender for the name of project and this should be mailed or deposited at the given registered address or the client or government office to the concerned department so this may be by the private sector this may be by the government bodies so in the based on the notice inviting tender contractor has to submit this envelope to the registered address with the particular time and duration has been given in the notice inviting tender now let us discuss about opening of tender after submission of the tender our next stage is opening of tenders for example you are a client or you are a representative of the client or you are engineer so in that case how will you open this tender which has been submitted by the contractor so let us discuss in detail so first of all you have to check that the withdrawal mention on the envelope if after the submission of the envelope if the contractor does not wants to do that work and he don't want to do that work so in that case there is mention the withdrawal so you have to remove that envelope which has been mentioned by the withdrawal so this is your first step for example you are a client and you are opening this tender so you have to follow with the first step you have to remove the envelope which has been mentioned by the withdrawal this is your first step and the second step is you have to open the envelope number 4 there should be envelope number 1 2 and 3 and in the envelope number 4 mention the name of the tender and next step is you have to open the envelope number 1 in that case there should be earnest money deposit by the contractor with the particular mod which has been mentioned in the notice inviting tender 
that may not allow the cash amount of the EMD. So the contractor has to follow with terms and conditions which has been already mentioned. So in envelope number one should contain EMD. If there is missing of the EMD, so tender will be rejected. And the second step is that after the getting EMD from the envelope number one, you have to open the envelope number two. And in the envelope number two, you have to check the, all the documents regarding facility and the capacity of the finance and the other information about the past experience from that firm. So you have to analyze is there mentioned all the documents is present in that envelope regarding financial capacity, regarding past experience of that firm, regarding to the facility of the machinery or any other. So after the opening of the envelope number two, the next step is to open the envelope number three. After the opening of the envelope number 4, then envelope number 1, then envelope number 2. The last step is to open the envelope number 3. In that envelope, the contractor has scored for the particular type of the work with price tender form. So this is the procedure for the opening of the tender. Now let us discuss about how to evaluate this tender. So, in generally, we are considering main three factors for the evaluating of the any type of the tender. First one is technical evaluation. Second one is commercial evaluation. And third one is capacity evaluation. So, let us start with technical evaluation. So, in this factor, we have to analyze the number of equipments having by the contractor so he can do that work with that equipment through smoothly so is he capable to do that work smoothly with that equipment so this is the one of the important point and second one is the feedback of the working of the equipment because the if the contractors having the particular equipment but that equipment is out of order. So the feedback of the working of the equipment should be considered important point for the technical evaluation. And next point we can consider the guaranteed technical particulars are to meet the minimum tender requirements. And if any alternative technology is required for that work, so contractor will do that work properly or not. So you have to analyze that for example, you are client and you are evaluating the tender. So in that case, the first factor is technical evaluation. So this is all about the technical evaluation. Now, next one is commercial evaluation. So in this evaluation process, the first point is the bid forms are duly filled or signed. It should be properly and the declared deviations on the commercial part are to be evaluated and the old cost are properly covered in the offered price because in the notice inviting tender they are mentioned about the detail of the work if the contractors didn't consider the all the cost for that work so there may be chances of the dispute between the contractor and client so this is the one of the important points the old cost are properly covered in the offered price and the next one is the bid price is specified currency. For example, contractor is bidding for the international work. So in that case, the contractor has to code the specified currency. For example, construction work is declared by the India. So in that case, uh, the currency will be rupees. So next one is details of any extra cost like delivery cost, shipping cost, custom charges, insurance for the laborers, and documentation, testing of the all the materials and inspections should be covered and should be identified in the evaluation. And next one is cost of spares if mentioned extra 
is identified if it is mentioned in contract document so this is all about the commercial evolution of tender now let us discuss about capacity evolution so in this evolution first of all we have to focus the financial strength of the contractor if the contractor is capable to do that work is capable for the financial to complete that work with terms and conditions of the project so in this evolution client or owner is evaluating the financial strength of the contractor so bidder has sound financial condition and sufficient funds to produce the raw materials and the process so that positive cash flow in the maintain to the delivery of equipment because he has to earn the all the resources like men and material to complete that work and the bidder is not under irrigation or any act resulting in bank corruptly because if any irrigation is applied on the contractor so it shows that he is not capable regarded to the financial he is not capable to complete with that financial fund and the bidder's financial has the sufficient immunity from the market economy trend and in the last one is in case of foreign bidder for example client offered a particular contract project for the international work so they are the participate of the contractors from the different countries and that tender process will be international so in that case if client is selecting any one contractor and he is not belong to our country but so in that case client or owner has to identify the geopolitical scenario of that country of contractors country so this all about the capacity evolution so dear students you may clear about how to submit tender how to open it and how we can evaluate of tender thank you